Okay guys, I am really excited about this video because it's taken me absolutely years to get to the point where I can simply explain MPLS in five minutes. Now, a bit of background, I have designed large MPLS networks, I have managed them, and I've always struggled to, uh, you know, explain MPLS in simple terms. How, not just the protocol itself, how it's working in core uh, service provider networks, in core enterprise networks, you know. Um, and this is probably the best um, explanation you will find on the internet. I have, I'm yet to come uh, to some sort of explanation which is better than this. And what started happening is I started explaining this to people and um, every time I would explain it in this sort of analogy, after a couple of minutes, people will be like, oh, it just all makes sense to us, you know, it'll be like, like a light bulb moment. So that's actually the reason behind this video. So without further ado, let's delve into uh, what I'm trying to talk about. So let's focus on this uh, blackboard here. What is MPLS? It's a tunneling mechanism, right? But what you will notice is in large enterprise uh, or um, service provider networks, MPLS is run along with an IGP, ISIS or OSPF and BGP. You don't just run MPLS on your own and you actually can't run MPLS on your own like this. Yes, you can configure MPLS and SADX, but this is a basic um, uh, five minute video to just get you to understand what is this, what is the trica between the three of them. So you have a network on the left i've actually created a network uh, a diagram to explain so we have we've got a network of three routers and we've been told right go ahead and just deliver this core network this will be the core network that is going to interconnect three data centers so in our case we have pe1 which is representing one data center pe2 which is representing another data center and pe3 which is representing another data center now obviously the whole idea of a core network is the core network connects all other networks together right perfect so let's get into the nitty-gritty of course we're going to we're going to run these three protocols we're, I mean, not protocol, IGP, a kind of uh, protocol, a kind of IGP, ISIS or SPF is what we're going to run, a kind of MPLS protocol, uh, RSVP, LDP, segment routing, what are we going to run? So I'm not going to get into exactly the nitty gritty of uh, that protocol, but uh, the terminology. So IGP represents ISIS or SPF, MPLS represents RSVP, TE, um, LDP, segment routing, and BGP represents, you know, BGP. In our case, IBGP uh, in this example. Okay, so what 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 are we first going to do is simply configure the base infrastructure right which in this diagram you can see as a, a point to point i know i've given a slash 24 just for ease of addressing so this is simply a point to point network point to point network point to point network and the pe1 pe2 pe3 now have um three loopback addresses 10.1.1.1 10.2.2.2 10.3.3.3 now the first goal in deploying a core network is to make the loopback speak to each other. That is the primary reason why we need an IGP. And in our case, we run OSPF or we run I or we run ISIS, we we will end up making the loopback speak to each other. In other words, PE1 would be able to see PE2 and PE3's loopback. It'll be able to ping them. Right. Job done. That is pretty much all you need from an IGP in our scenario. And and without further to do, without this, nothing will work. We won't have MPLS working, we won't have BGP working. So the first step is we get our IGP working. Perfect. Now, once our I IGP is working, that's done. The next step that we need to do is now we can run MPLS. Now, we simply, in, in our example, I'm just going to say we run LDP, LDP runs, and all of a sudden we have tunnels enabled. Now, what are these tunnels there for? Um, what, from, from the perspective of PE1, you now have a tunnel to PE3 and you have a tunnel to PE2. This is an MPLS tunnel. And what this means is that to get to the loopback address of 10.3.3.3, we are going to know what label to, to, to push and encapsulate the IP packet inside you know the mpls label that comes in front of the ip packet so we will now know what label to put in front perfect job done so mpls starts running and we now have a beautiful mpls network running we have we have tunnels everywhere everyone can speak to each other perfect job done but what next nothing's going to use those tunnels because 
Why do we create these tunnels? We create them for traffic, right? We want traffic to use these tunnels. These are just endpoints. And they're, like I explained before, they are whole data centers at the back of these uh, routers, right? So um, we kind of want those data centers to be able to speak to each other and send traffic, right? That is where BGP comes in. What we're now going to do is we are going to, we are going to run BGP uh, between PE1, PE2, and PE3. And remember, IGP enabled us to uh, run BGP, exactly how it enabled us to run MPLS. So what we're going to do is we're going to run BGP and we are going to simply um, uh, get, get prefixes across from different data centers. So obviously in this example, I've just, for simplicity, remember the data centers, but just I've just removed the data center that's in between and I've just put a customer here, customer, your VM, just name it whatever you feel like for your ease, but just get an idea that this is something that is trying to speak to this here, a prefix from Google, for example. Uh, so, imagine that you ended up running BGP and uh, BGP is running fine, you've got it all uh, good. I'm actually going to, yeah, it's fine, just leave that. I, I wanted to just share the window screens nicely, but I've just, it just won't let me do it nicely. Actually, I probably can try here. You know what, it's not worth it. I'll just ignore that. Uh, anyway, so without further ado, uh, where were we? Right, so we ran BGP. And now all our prefixes from here and from Google are shared across. Now what you will see is in all these routing tables on these routers, you will see prefixes from Google shared across. And for simplicity, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give that prefix a name. Oh, did I just mess up again? Uh, there you go. Right. Ah, it's just my OCD. Uh, right, okay, so where was I? I am going to add an object. I'm just going to add a bit of text and I'm going to give a prefix from Google. So as you know, a dot a dot a dot zero belongs to Google. I'm going to add that prefix and I'm going to put it on here in front of Google. Right. So that's our prefix and example that uh, we want um, that, that, that meaningful traffic is going to go to. And this customer is trying to speak to that. Now, as soon as you run BGP, what will happen is that a.a.a.0 .a 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 is going to get shared across to PE1 and PE2. Perfect, job done. Now, how do we start using MPLS? Remember, we built tunnels across, right? And uh, our tunnels um, are everywhere. They're basically here, 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 everywhere. And uh, so, from a customer journey point of view, now that PE3 knows how to get to a.a.a.0 .a 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 and it thinks that to get to 8.8.8.0 in its next stop is 10.2.2.2. .2 what will happen is a packet from here from a customer is going to come to PE3 and PE3 is going to look at it in, in, in basic terms. Obviously, in the next video, I can go in a lot more detail about INA3 and all those tables that it will probably use. But for now, PE3 is going to look into its routing table and it's going to see an entry and the entry is going to say to get to 8.8.8.0 just use a label, just push a label, for example, 50103, and send it across this interface, GE003. Forget penultimate hot pop in. Normally we use the label three, but just ignore all of that. Um, uh, which which basically is uh, just just ignore that for now because it's not part of this uh, it's not the scope of this basic video, uh, but what I'm trying to explain here is that uh, it's going to push that uh, push that in that um, IP packet push that label on, on top of the IP packet and it's going to send it here and when PE two receives that it's going to remove that label and it will then just use normal routing and and send traffic forward to Google and return traffic the same way. When the return traffic comes back, it's going to come here, and then PE2 is going to know the prefix of the customer through PE3, all the way here, and it'll have two paths to go through. Either it'll use that label, or most likely will use the label, LSP, label switch path um, through here, and it's going to go back. Now, coming back to what we were talking about before. Now, as you can see, that our IGP enabled our loopbacks to speak to each other, Perfect. Now the loopbacks and speak to each other. Then we ran MPLS to enable tunnels. And then for meaningful traffic, we had to run BGP. And that is the trica I was talking about. Okay, so back to basics. Your IGP is definitely needed. Without your IGP, you're not going to get anywhere. 
IGP is what enables loopbacks to speak to each other. Without IGP, your MPLS won't work. Your RSVP, LDP, sort of signaling protocol, segment routing, nothing would work. Then, BGP. You need IGP for BGP to work because you're trying to build BGP between loopbacks. That's not going to work either because PE3 has no clue how to get to 10.2.2.2. Remember, that's a loopback address. Yes, PE3 knows about this network only. So, BGP needs IGP as well. PE3 needs to build a BGP neighbor with this loopback address and this loopback address. You can't do that without IGP. So, your IGP is your base. Next, you run MPLS, you run BGP. What happens? Both of them start using each other. You don't run MPLS, you'll just have a non-tunneled um, core network where you'll just be IP routing. You won't be able to use the power that comes with MPLS for tunneling, where you can hide so many protocols behind uh, the MPLS uh, label stack. Similarly, without BGP, what's the point of this tunnel? You can't send meaningful traffic there. Um, so it's a trica that just everything complements each other. And that is how simple a core MPLS network really is. So um, you can go to any big sort of network and pretty much this is how they're working. And my goal with this video was to was to explain to you how this trica is working. If you keep it, keep, keep things in mind this way, that your IGP is your base, MPLS runs through IBGP, IGP, I meant, sorry, BGP runs using IGP and they both complement each other. That's it job done and that's how simple it really is so um i hope you found this video informative and i'd like to thank you for viewing